Jed York spoke mm-hmm. at the NFL annual meetings and he always shares a lot. I'll give him that. He always gives you a lot to sink your teeth into. And um, I asked him, Ryan Hensley told, gave me the question, mm-hmm. read him his quote from 10 years ago, read him his quote from a few months ago, ask him to explain the shift in thinking of the guy who would only raise an, uh, Super Bowl banners to the guy who is thinks losing in the NFC Championship game isn't mm-hmm. necessarily an unsuccessful season. So right. Jed heard the question. Jed answered at length multiple times mm-hmm. and just gave a long list of excuses for why he shouldn't be expected to be his uncle and why what he has accomplished is actually extremely successful. Um, what did you think of all the various ways that Jed let himself off the hook? I mean, Jed basically rolled up with a truck full of Newport 100 that said, ha ha, I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> like, pretty <much. laughs> like, pretty much. Like, yeah. look, what do you guys mean winning and losing season? Let me break this down to you with Billionaire. So yeah. first of all, yeah, we I own the franchise, all right? <laughs> and we're in the Super Bowl. So you guys don't necessarily know how it means. The actual trophy, that's for you guys, the peasants. Yeah. The people who want to talk about it in the bar or whatever bowling alley you frequent on the weekends. But me, however, I'm swimming in cash. And it's amazing. I found Kyle. We've gotten more money. I've actually taken over the team. I don't have my father horning in on me. And what I have to do right now is basically let you guys down lightly on the fact that this is a business. And as long as we make the playoffs, okay, and we're in the show, the only difference between the winner and the loser from the perspective of a billionaire is an extra 45 minutes in a parade. They get to stay at the end of the game for the ceremony, and they get their parade afterwards. Afterwards, fiscally, they get the same money. They get the same exposure, all right? And yeah. he is happy being in the circus. You know what annoyed me, though, a little bit with his answer? He went straight to the salary cap. Mm-hmm. Right, like so, he was explaining how it's okay and they've they're they're successful and they're a good business. But then there was a follow up question, basically saying, "Well, like, well, you know, Eddie didn't really think about things like that," mm-hmm. and he was like, "Well, Eddie didn't have a salary cap, like it right away, very defensive." When actually Eddie did have a salary cap in 1994, that's how much this is like a sore spot for Jed York. Eddie did have a salary cap in '94, first year of the cap. Yes, he did. He won the Super Bowl. Hmm. So I mean, right away, Jed's wrong, but, but so he's, he's trying to be like, well, you know, Eddie had an unfair advantage. Mm-hmm. Eddie had the best quarterback in the league. Ed, the second highest paid quarterback in the league was Joe's backup. I, if I could do these things, of course I would, because I'm Eddie the third, but I'm not allowed to. And so I'm doing the best that I can. And frankly, I'm doing a better job than Eddie, who just had an easy job. Yeah, he doesn't have to deal with the actual throws of the real NFL. Nope. Um, one of the things that he said, especially right after he answered your fire ass question, which was, no, you can't be ashamed of a successful season. And our goal is to always win Super Bowls. So which is it, Jed? All right. Yeah. Is the goal is to win Super Bowls, then how can you, in fact, have a successful season? You're talking out of both sides of your mouth. Also, he says it's not yeah, a complete not a successful season, and the goal was to compete for a Super Bowl. Yo, exactly. Right. Um, he also said it's not a complete failure if you do not win. Well, give us give us the wins. Tell us, tell us, tell us where we had the tell us where we had. All of the wins that we can't see, Jed, outside of the fact that the team is as successful and as viable and profitable as it's ever been. Outside of that, we're still stuck in limbo with what we actually want. So nobody, as far as the fan base, is walking away with saying, guys, come on. It wasn't that bad of a season. Everybody is completely um, galvanized into how we lost that game. One thing that he also said is that you can't say the season was a complete disgrace. You're gaslighting. And yeah. you're moving the goalpost, okay? Yeah. Nobody said that this season was a disgrace, okay? And if you keep always trying to put in straw man arguments with, right. well, the season wasn't horrible. Nobody said the season was horrible. Right. We're talking about finishing a goal. Right. I feel like those are moments where Jed likes to try to move the goalpost and kind of give a dog whistle to the fact that, dude, we're profitable. I'm making yeah. money. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not like, gonna, what are you I'm not gonna make changes about? to our operation. We're making money hand over fist. What do you want me to do? Like, we had a meeting 
We told yeah. them we want to win the Super Bowl. Like, that's not going to change. But we wrote on a whiteboard, mission statement, win the Super Bowl. Like, that, yeah. we're serious. I just think that – I think the biggest thing is that Jed – he, it's not the fact that, that we have a profitable organization and that's Jed's sole reason for being here, not winning a Super Bowl, but it's the fact when he comes out and gets caught in these weird moments. Like, look at the press conference that he had before the Super Bowl. He was trying to rewrite history with that entire press conference. He yeah. knew that we had a rough start, and on top of it, he had given Kyle an extension off of his own political situations that he was dealing with, and he was trying his best to run things smoothly along. He restructured older players in the beginning of the season to create room, and then throughout the season, we had to add more players to the defense just to make it through. Jed, thought that the smoke cleared. Even when we struggled through the first two rounds of the playoffs, what did he do? He held court, sat up and, fed, and talked about the origin story of everything, basically trying to rewrite history and give their own and give their own prognosis of what was going to happen in the future. He talked about exactly how Brock was acquired. He talked about exactly when Kyle Shanahan knew Brock was the guy. And, and then he made sure to make sure that the story was out there when Jimmy and Trey were both in the building. That's when the story gets told. Then he starts talking about, oh, well, this is what we regularly do in the draft. And usually we don't primarily do these things in free agency. But I'm the one who pushed Kyle to get CMC. He had a victory lap. He counted his eggs before they hatched, man. And that story would have been something that fans would have been lynched to for decades, for years. to That would have been the, the original constitution of mm -hmm. how it all started if we won. But now he's got egg on his face because we mm -hmm. lost. So now you go back and that doesn't age over time well. Okay, one more thing that he said at the owners' meetings that really stuck with me. He's, he basically reduced Eddie to, well, Eddie won those cha championships because he had the best quarterback in the league and no salary cap. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. And, and so he's saying, I don't have the best quarterback in the league. I do have a salary cap. And the fact that we've been able to come close, compete, be in the Super Bowl, actually shows that they have the best organization in football. Did you not under... He really kind of put that together. Like, look, Kansas City has Mahomes, okay? But we have an organization and a team. It's like, dude... Kansas City has a better organization than you, okay? They have a better coach than you. They have a better defensive coordinator than you. They don't just have a better quarterback, quarterback. than you. They, yeah. they're not, he called himself a program, too, like it's college. You, you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. You have nothing. You have a team that hasn't finished the deal and is running out of time. And you might be able to retool and, and find a new way to compete, but you even admitted, he's like, we have a very good quarterback in Brock Purdy, but he's not Patrick Mahomes. Okay, so you haven't been able to beat Mahomes with Purdy making 900K, but you're going to give him $55 million a year, and now you're going to be able to beat this quarterback that you acknowledge is in a whole different stratosphere than yours? How does that work? Kyle's going to distance himself. There's no way. Yeah. Kyle's yeah. not going to go down. Kyle's not going to go down with, uh, with, 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 um, with Brock. He's not going to go down with him. And I'm going to tell you, when the rubber meets the road, when it's time for Brock to get that money and Kyle's got to get rid of his – Kyle's got to get rid of his toys and he's got to get rid of Debo. You can't pay him $28 million a year and Trent's gone and George is on his way out. And it's going to make sense from the fan base to pay our quarterback. That's how you traditionally do – that's how you traditionally compensate the guy who you're, rap who you're galvanizing yourself around. But – I don't see it, and I and I don't think the fans are going to let Kyle off the hook. Kyle, Brock is enough. Not only is enough, but I, I'm predicting that Brock is going to get better. He's got a full year. I mean, it all plays, man. He came off of a UCL injury over the season, came in, didn't have an offseason, and had limited reps and came in and, and kept himself upright and actually had himself in the MVP discussion throughout the year. I know from watching football for a very long time, Fans have a romanticy with quarterbacks, and it's hard to stomach a quarterback being thrown under the bus, especially one that you forced on us and made us fall in love with. It's going to be something to watch. I'm telling you, absolutely. Um, did he make any other excuses for why he hasn't won a Super Bowl? I think that was it. To his credit, he didn't make any more excuses than that. It's just that I he said the lemonade stand thing, and I'll I'll never get over it. It's like you really won't. It doesn't seem like he's giving Eddie credit. 
Like, I mean, God, he had no salary cap and Joe Montana. Like, of course. He, why did he win more Super Bowls? I'm over here. I got all these constraints. And look at look at what we've created. It's like, man, you need to look in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. You it, haven't created it, anything. Rich. You haven't yeah. done anything. You've wasted opportunities. You wasted one with Harbaugh, and you're this close to wasting one uh, with whoever you want to put at the, uh, the face of this one. Well, let's, well, well, that's also I tons of pushback on this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Look, we have been, we've been like systematically groomed into like lowering our own standard with this regime yeah. and this ownership. It used to be that we, that Kyle brought us back to the glory in which we had before him. Now it morphed into we can't do anything with Kyle because before Kyle, we were nothing. Now it's morphed into as long as Kyle can just get a Super Bowl, we're good. Now it's almost morphed to Kyle won't be fired if he doesn't miss the playoffs. It's 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 slowly but surely devolving into something where if you really step back and look at it, it's not a missed season. It's not blunders on one or two Super Bowls and it's not even missing the opportunity to push for a window to get one Super Bowl but if you look at the rosters that we've had for almost eight years especially since 2009 so you can at least say six years I mean 2019 rather so you can at least say six years we're erring on the side of a missed opportunity at a dynasty right. it's not just one missed Super Bowl and I think again what's disheartening about what he said is like he could say that the goal is to win a Super Bowl and he can say that they got to get over the hump, but he isn't saying that they have to do anything differently to achieve that goal. What they're mm -hmm. what he said was to win a Super Bowl, you have to get to the Super Bowl. And mm -hmm. the Niners are successful at that part of the goal. So what they're going to do is keep doing what they're doing, and eventually they'll get lucky. Something will break their way. Like That's what he's saying. We have the organization. We got the program. We're doing everything even better than Kansas City, frankly. We just can't go back in time and draft Patrick Mahomes. So we just got to keep on keeping on. And eventually we'll win a Super Bowl or we won't. But either way, that's such a primitive way to judge people's success and to, uh, you know, base a legacy. People who know ball understand that we are the gold standard in, 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 in the NFL. And people that think that the Kansas City Chiefs are the gold standard are just really primitive. They just don't yeah, know. Like, you're just not in. You're not, no. you're not informed. I mean, ask um, Kyle Shanahan. He'll, he'll tell you. Well, I don't, I'm not mad at their pride in the organization, but it's just, you know, it's gonna, it's, there's a lot that's going to happen. Adam Peters is not in the building anymore. We're going to see what John Lynch is going to do in the draft and thus far in the offseason to see if he's really hit. You know, John talked about free agency as if he loved literally every guy they got and they got, they were, they got every guy they were supposed to. So we'll see, man. Things are always changing. And um, if you really want to look at the past couple of years, if there was ever a time for us to kind of put the, close the book on this entire like, saga it was this past season we really don't know the lingering effects of us losing this game not taking advantage of this season we, we, we still don't know